Example 4.5. In this example, we consider an steady two-dimensional flow field as it was discussed in example 4.2. We need to determine the acceleration field for this flow. The first step is to decompose the velocity into its components. We have a velocity vector to be V0 L times minus X I plus Y J. This indicates that there are two components. The component on the X axis is U, which is minus V0 divided by L times X. And then we have the component on the Y axis, which is V, which is V0 divided by L times Y. Since we have two different axes, we are going to be able to calculate the acceleration in two directions. So we have the component in the x-axis and the component on the y-axis. We're going to write the material derivative for both and we're going to cancel based on the information that we have of the problem. So we start the u dt plus u du dx plus v du dy plus w du dz. And we do the same thing for the y coordinate, dv dt plus u dv dx plus v dv dy plus w dv dz. Since it's two coordinates only for two dimensions, the z goes away. And since it's the steady case, these values are also equal to zero. Notice that the information that we need is the velocities for u and v, and the derivative for u with respect to x, u with respect to y, v with respect to x, and v with respect to y. So let's calculate those derivatives so that we could substitute back. So we're going to calculate du dx, we take the derivative of this quantity, and that is simply negative v0 L. The derivative of u with respect to y is 0. The derivative of v with respect to x is also 0. And if we take the derivative of v with respect to y, notice that it gives us v0 divided by L. Now we substitute back. We could so notice that this derivative is zero as well as this one, so we could get rid of this term and this term. Therefore, the acceleration in the x-axis simply reduces to u, the u, the x, and we replace the quantities as negative v0 divided by l times x, and the derivative, which is minus v0 l. We multiply it out. And we get v0 squared, l squared, and x. And we follow the same process for the velocity in the y-axis. So that's simply v, dv dy. And we substitute once again. This is v0 divided by l times y. And the derivative is v0 l. Therefore, this is going to keep us v0 l divided by l squared times y. If we want to be able to obtain the magnitude of this acceleration, we simply take the norm of the vector. And that is simply done by taking the square root of each one of the components to the second power. So simply you do ax squared plus ay squared. If you substitute the values that we have for ax and yx and ay into this equation and you do a little bit of algebra, you're going to find out that the magnitude of this acceleration becomes v0 squared l squared times square root of x squared plus y squared. So at the end, the acceleration vector is written as the component in the x-axis, so we write v0 squared divided by l squared x and the x component plus 
b zero square l square y and the j component please make sure that you go back review how to do the material derivatives cancel the terms that are necessary based on the information about the flow take the derivatives plug them back in and get the information that you require